What's up guys, Frugal BC, SWE Network goes down for a very short amount of time, but it did go down, ruining its perfect record. We're gonna look at that plus other crypto news, including Algorand whale ownership down while retail is up. What that means, uh, Casper having a huge comeback. I think that's really interesting. Um, Hedera and SpaceX joining forces. We're gonna take a look at this piece of news and have the tables turned on the SEC. That's right, they're getting a little taste of their own medicine. We're gonna dive into that news today on Frugal BC. By the way, guys, if you like this stuff, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. Now remember, you don't have to smash it. You can just press it gently. It works just fine that way too. And uh, we have channel memberships. If you want these videos before anyone else, you can get them for only one dollar. So if you want to, if you want to boost your uh, your fanship of the show, that's a great way to do it. We're gonna have other members. We're gonna have uh, exclusive videos coming up too. Uh, right now, I'm doing a couple of those for members, and we will have that at a higher tier in the near future. So, but for right now, $1, $1 a month gets you early access to all of our videos. And so keep an eye out for that. And I just wanna give a sh brief shout out to Non-Fungible Domains. They are our channel sponsor and we appreciate them. You can you can get a .algo address just like mine, frugalbc.algo, find that in the description below. But let's get to today's news. First off, um, Algorand whale ship owners, <laughs> I keep saying that wrong. Algorand whale ownership is down while retail is up. What does that mean for the chain? Well, I think it's pretty bullish actually. Let's take a look at this. Uh, this is from JT Media. JT was a content creator on Algorand. He's taken a back seat a little bit, but I think he's going to be coming back. JT says retail ownership of Algo has continued to grow while whale ship owner has continued to shrink. The amount of holders Hodlers has exploded. There's a huge gap between new balances and price. Algorand looks juicy. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. So yeah, we can see whales and then investors, retail, whales going way down and retail coming way up on Algorand. I think that's really good. I think you want to see that retail is here. Good stuff. And he's got some other charts here. Yeah. People who have been holding more than one year. Look at that. That's really good. And then uh, total addresses, total, total with balance has been really taking off that's really cool of course it's happening while the price has been down but i know we've uh, popped back up in the last last few days so algorand sitting over 20 cents and being up quite a bit it's nice to see so good on algorand but that's not our only news we got plenty more coming uh let's take a look at this uh and that is casper so i think a lot of people thought that things were that casper was kind of in trouble because once uh their main lab left for hedera it seemed like a huge coup and a nice win for Hedera, which absolutely needed it at the time because sentiment was pretty pretty rough. But uh, Casper making a making a big comeback. I think this is really interesting. And this is from Nick Crypto Crusader, and he says, "Actually, crazy to see the Casper doing the unthinkable, up over 130 percent in the last 24 hours." Now this is from. November 17th. So this is a Sunday post just to keep that in mind in context, but it did pump 130% in 24 hours. And he says, I watched Ada do the same thing in 2020, 2021. And I even watched Algo do a very similar thing recently. Are we about to watch Casper violently reverse shocking those who sold into the peak negative sentiment? Maybe. Well, let's, uh, why don't we take a look right now? Um, yeah, up on the, up about 7.6% on the day. And you know, it came back from that little well, okay, this is this is the spike we're talking about. Wait, is it? No, 17th. Yeah, that was this one. So we did see a giant spike on Casper. It's come down a bit, but you know, even on the week, it is still up almost a hundred percent, which is just wild. Just absolutely wild. Really nice to see. In fact, when he was posting that on the 17th, he might not have even been referring to hard to say, hard to say, um, to match the timelines there, but you know, it was just a month ago or just a, just a week ago, actually, it was like less than a penny and now it's worth, now it's worth uh, 1.5 cents. So pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive run up from Casper. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what, to, what explains that another than things just kind of go crazy in, in the, the bull market. We're not even in all season yet, which is wild. So uh, nice to see that for Casper. Apparently they've weathered the storm. So good for them. And speaking of Hedera, it looks like is Hedera and SpaceX about to join forces? Let me take a look at this piece of news because, I mean, obviously everyone's talking about SpaceX right now with the, the big launches that they've been having, especially with Starship and now Hedera possibly joining forces with them. 
All right, this, this is from Sean. SpaceX is sending a satellite powered satellite powered by HBAR to space this January after NASA research paper on Hedera. Um, after after Hedera's partner in the DREC Alliance, Cardano founder uh, Charles Hoskinson visited Elon's Elon Musk's SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne yesterday, and it was announced on Swiss national television today that Whiskey and SpaceX are sending HBAR to space in January. That's right. HBAR going to space, a satellite powered by Hedera, will facilitate transactions of cryptocurrency in space, potentially paving the way for future satellite-to-satellite payment networks and might re- might redefine transactions across Earth and space. This technology could potentially be extremely important for the colonization of Mars, but also for future industries that will live in space. And this comes after further, uh, further rumors of Cardano and Hedera powering a plethora of government efficiency initiatives explored by Doge. So there is, there's the big picture. Um, I th- and then, you know, obviously someone put that together, but uh, that's a pretty bullish thing for Hedera to, to see. And uh, this comes after, you know, that they need some transactions, I'll say, because I don't know if you guys are aware of this. We covered this before. The transactions went to like zero on almost zero on Hedera from being quite a bit higher. Um, it's had billions of transactions and now it's getting like one a second or something like that. Oh, this guy follows me. Interesting. Am I following him back? I am. OK. So and that was that was the result of one of the D, one of the uh, governing council members taking its transactions off of Hedera. So almost all the transactions that you saw were from this one governing council member. And that's, I was a little disturbed by that. It made me like question some other metrics on these, on these platforms. So you gotta be, you gotta be kind of careful. All right. But the big news, the big news, oh, wait, one more. We got one more. Uh, the SEC tables, have they turned on the, I'm sorry, have the tables turned on the SEC? Well, it looks like there's a lawsuit against the SEC now, uh, kind of kind of reversing uh, the trend there. So let's take a look at this one. Yeah, this is from Crypto Wendy O, who um, I rather like. Actually, she's she's uh, retweeting Eleanor Terrett, who's a Fox Business News reporter. It says, Scoop, 18 U.S. states have filed to sue the SEC and its commissioners, accusing them of unconstitutional overreach and unfair persecution of the crypto industry under the leadership of agency chief Gary Gensler. That's right. Turn on the tables, and these are the states, by the way. That's that's really fascinating. In fact, we can uh, pull up who that is. It's Kentucky, Nebraska, Tennessee, West Virginia, Iowa, Texas, Mississippi, Montana, Arkansas, Ohio, Kansas, Missouri, Indiana, Utah, Louisiana, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Florida, uh, and Florida. So those are all the ones that are suing. I think way more states should be involved in that. Uh, The lawsuit signed by 18 Republican attorney generals details how the agency has committed gross government overreach with its regulations by enforcing crusade against the $3 trillion industry, resulting in an infringement upon states' rights to regulate their economies. I think that's great. I'm kind of surprised. I guess it makes sense from a state perspective. You know, United States, like we, we have this big federal government, but I think people forget that it was founded and the idea that the states have the power and so I think that's really that's a really interesting development. And um, I, it's too bad it just has to be Republicans, because I think everybody could agree that there's been overreach. So it's not really about the fact that it's not about regulation. It's the fact that they've not really had regulation. It's, it really is more persecution. The way they word it is perfect. It's it's persecution because they didn't like lay out, hey, here's the rules, follow these rules. It's more like, we're not going to tell you the rules. And even when you ask what rules you've broken, we're not going to tell you. That's what happened with the uh, Wells notice against Coinbase. They just throw this stuff out there. It's it's weaponization more than it is actual governance. And so good. I'm glad they're pushing back. Okay. But our final piece of news and our biggest is that SWE network went down and some people are starting to make Solana comparisons and that's maybe not a bad comparison considering the the price action of Solana but anyway let's take a look at the news uh, it's fixed pretty quickly I should mention and I want to say I didn't see this initially from Sui I saw this from other accounts so I think it's a good sign in the ecosystem that people uh, people who are fans of the coin are not afraid to point this out you, you never want like any everybody trying to hide the bad news and you know be shills uh, service announcement the sweet network is currently experiencing an outage and not processing processing transactions yeah it wasn't uh, wasn't creating blocks for a good hour or so uh, this is 5:21 a.m is when they posted this today so uh, we've identified the issue and a fix will be deployed shortly 
We appreciate your patience and will continue to provide updates. And that's not all, by the way. Um, so this is at 6.08. So yeah, what was that, about an hour? 5.21. Yeah, so less than an hour. The Sweet Network is back up and processing transactions again, thanks to the swift work from an incredible community of SWE validators. A two-hour downtime. Okay, so it was about two hours. Um, the two-hour downtime was caused by a bug in transaction scheduling logic that caused validators to crash, which has now been resolved. So it's up. <laughs> Here's the, uh, yep, <laughs> here's the little map of it. You can see the red, and I had some other tr uh, some other uh, commentary tag, but nothing, mostly it's just pointing to what happened. And so I think having the official SWE network um, layout here is is helpful. And so a two hour downtime, and that's I think that's better. I think Solana's had much worse downtimes. So good to see, and I hope, uh, hope they can keep that together. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys, for watching. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, I'd love you to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't have to smash it. You can just press it gently. It works just fine that way, too. And uh, we do have channel memberships, so check that out in the description, as well as all our sponsors and our links. Otherwise, I'm FrugalBC. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the future.